Well, good morning. It's good having you here. Welcome to the Sunday devotional time for today. It is September 13th, 2020. And it's going to be a little bit different format today. The reason being, next week is a special Sunday in the Church of the Nazarene on September 20th, 2020. And it's called Freedom Sunday. And Freedom Sunday is a global effort where we we kind of unite and pull resources and energy to combat the problem of human trafficking and slavery in our world. So before we get started for today, check out this short video. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. In our world today, experts estimate that 40 million children, women and men are victims of slavery. Human trafficking is a crime that turns people into commodities to be bought and sold. It's not only something that happens far from home, it's also happening where we live, in our own communities. Every person victimized by trafficking is a child of God, dearly loved and made in His image. It's time to come together as a church to take a stand against human trafficking. It's time to help those who are oppressed go free. You know, it's really, it's really neat that we have an opportunity to be a part of this initiative. Too often times in our world, we have these awareness type initiatives that sometimes lack action. But, you know, with Freedom Sunday, it's being backed with real action. You know, there, there are support centers and there are uh, resource centers and there are um, shelters and support for people that are coming out of this trafficking dilemma. That their lives have been so rocked. And the Church of the Nazarene is actually creating places where people that come out of this life of human trafficking and slavery, they can go and be cared for and supported. And that goes right in line with what Jesus is talking about. You know, the scripture they reference in that video is very powerful. And if you're trying to, they quoted it, but if you have your Bibles, it's actually Luke 4. And it's verse 18 and 19. And this was really a powerful declaration by Jesus. He's referencing Isaiah, but he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so Jesus is teaching this. And he's really saying, hey, here's what I'm all about. And here's what I'm here for. And you'll see a, a big part of that chunk is the to set the oppressed free. And yeah, we do that. We do that in our churches, in our lives, in a spiritual way. You know, obviously sin is more complicated than just one thing. And we live in a fallen world. And there's all kinds of different oppression that people might face. But this whole idea of human trafficking is beyond just a spiritual or emotional thing. This is taking someone that's made in the image of God and relegating them to just being a product bought and sold like something you get at Walmart. And I can't think of anything more demeaning 
for someone made in the image of God than to be bought and sold. You know, and, and the other thing is this. It's in our DNA to be abolitionist. And that's one thing you don't hear a lot about. But if you look at the history of things, Christianity, especially in England and in America, we go hand in hand with being abolitionists that push back against slavery and push back against human trafficking. And without Christians who are abolitionists, there had never been pushed back against slavery in the modern world. You know, that's, that's in our DNA. That's what we're about. And that's because of the Christ who is in, within, within us. It is not just because it's some platform we want to get in line with. It's because that's what Jesus was sent here to do. He was sent here to set the oppressed free. And so in England and America, when we decided, hey, we're going to push back against this. This is not okay. That was very much a Christ-like thing to do. And Freedom Sunday is no different. And so I encourage you really this week, be praying about this. How could God use you to help educate and uh, provide support? Because next Sunday on the 20th, we're going raise support for this initiative. Like I said, this is not just a thing about awareness. This is actual action. And the Church of the Nazarene, I'm very proud to say they are creating life-changing opportunities for people to help rescue people, get them out of this lifestyle that they've been forced into, and provide the proper support and care that they can move on from it and live as normal of a life as possible. And you know, just like Joseph, you know, Joseph was the favorite son of his dad. It was given that coat of many colors and his brothers got jealous and they beat him up and they sold him into slavery. Joseph was a victim of human trafficking. And as devastating as that was, God used that and strategically elevated Joseph through the ranks to a prominent position and impacted the whole world. And you know what? There's hundreds and thousands of Josephs out there that have been beaten up and forced into this lifestyle they wanted nothing to do with. And it's on us to partner with God to not just raise awareness, but to really push back against that and to set the oppressed free and to rescue the prisoners. You know, this is not a new thing for us. There's been abolitionists for, I think, almost 300 years in the Christian movement. And so this should be something very natural for us. I would encourage you to pray about this. And next week, when the opportunity presents itself, if you want to help support, you know, be a part of that, contribute, partner with the effort. And let's not just be content to be people that raise awareness. But let's take the next step. Let's be people of action. And let's be people that look to set the oppressed free. You know, there's a lot of different talk in this day and age. Oftentimes we need more action. We need more love. We need more rescuing. It'll make the world a better place. You know, we live in a fallen world, a sinful world. And human trafficking is just a symptom of that bigger problem. God wants us to be a part of his kingdom that pushes back and sets the oppressed free and impacts the world in a special way. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the challenge today. I want to thank you for this initiative of Freedom Sunday. Lord, help us to prayerfully consider how we can be involved. And uh, there's a lot going on. I'm glad it's not just awareness and talk, but it's actually action. Lord, help us to be a part of this. And not just this specific initiative, but help us to live a life that helps bring your kingdom to this fallen world. As we know, human trafficking is just a symptom of a bigger problem in our world. Lord, help us to be a part of your kingdom that's pushing back on that. That your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, guys, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, just a reminder, 1045, 
We're going to have our service being live streamed. It's going to be on Facebook and YouTube. We're glad you're able to spend your Sunday with us. Take care. We'll see you next week.